We are going to Raku fire pieces of work that have been bisque fired to 900 degrees centigrade. First, a transparent glaze is prepared. In a bucket which contains 5 litres of water, we add 2 kilograms of nepheline cyanide and 2 kilograms of gersky borate. Pour the liquid glaze through a glaze sieve to remove any hard lumps. Now we are ready to start glazing. This glaze has several advantages. In the first place, this glaze will keep for many years. In the second place, this transparent glaze can easily be applied with a brush without it ending up in stripes. With this glaze you can apply two to three coats on top of each other without any problems. One possible disadvantage with this glaze is it is easy to miss a bit, particularly for people wearing spectacles. But we have an easy solution. Add some beetroot juice to the glaze and it will give the liquid glaze a colour which will disappear during firing. You could also use, for example, acrylic paint. If you see some uneven spots on the glaze, that is not a problem with this glaze, which is based on Gersky Borat. It will even out when the glaze melts. When I have applied glaze to the underside of the work, I prefer to clean it off so that I can keep the shelves clean from glaze spots. I take a large cushion which I have moistened. I wipe it and it is clean. We shall now glaze this bowl. Then we are ready to start firing. Another big advantage is that you do not need to add gum arabic to this glaze. You can just pick up the work without damaging the glaze and the glaze will stay in suspension. We place the work into the kiln in such a way that we can see each piece during the firing. By placing the bowl sideways up against the wall, it will be easier to remove it from the kiln. We use sawn off pieces of fire brick to lift the pieces. This way we get more work into the kiln.
In the space opposite the burner where the heat of the flames flows upwards, no work should be placed. The work that we have just finished glazing is going to be fired straight away. Because the work is still damp from the glazing, we fire very slowly for the first 20 minutes up to a maximum of 200 degrees centigrade. Our experience is that after 20 minutes the work is dry enough to speed the firing up to 1000 degrees centigrade in about 3 quarters of an hour. About 100 degrees before the glaze starts to melt, you can see how the glaze changes from powder to glass. In this firing you can see it at 900 degrees centigrade because our glaze melts at 1000 degrees centigrade. You can see more and more bubbles appear, which will disappear around top temperature. We now wait until all the bubbles have disappeared and the glaze is smooth and shiny on all the pieces. If you are in any doubt whether all the pieces have reached a good melt, it would be wise to continue firing a little longer while holding the temperature to a steady 1000 degrees centigrade. Soaking for a quarter of an hour will not affect the end result. The moment has finally arrived. Now you can turn off the gas and start unloading the kiln. We leave the gas burning on a very low flame because we want to remove the work in three steps. This has the advantage that we can give each piece our full attention. Because of the thermal shock, the glaze starts to develop hairline cracks. In the reduction chamber, the smoke penetrates into these cracks and where there is no glaze, the piece becomes black. It is important to wait until the crackle in the glaze develops naturally. You can influence the crazing by blowing onto the piece.
Make sure that enough pieces are in the reduction chamber because if a small piece sits alone in a large chamber not enough smoke will be created for the work and the crazing to become black enough. If you wait for at least half an hour, then the smoke will have gone when you open the reduction chamber. We will now have a look at the result. There is still a layer of soot on the work. This we will clean off. If it is difficult to remove the soot, we use some sand and start scrubbing. Here you will see the place where I blew onto the glaze. This is proof that you can influence the crazing of a glaze. Repeatedly we see the crazing has not taken place, where the glaze has been in direct contact with a lot of sawdust. That is why we use very little sawdust. Otherwise you get a crust of sawdust onto your work, where the smoke could not penetrate. On this bowl you can see that on this side we have crazing because we only used a little sawdust and here where it was in direct contact with the sawdust we have no crazing at all. You can also influence the crazing with the help of water. In the next firing we will show you how you can create various colours with the same glaze, but 3% copper oxide added to it. This little vase I place quickly into the sawdust. And throw quite a lot of sawdust on top. These two small vases I leave to cool a little longer.
I sprinkle some sawdust here and there. This one I leave to cool even longer. I can now see the crazing appear quite clearly. I think that here we should have more mass. That is why I throw in a few more hot bricks.